Okay, so here we are with another live broadcast. The last one is quite some time ago. And I'm doing this live cast to give a quick response to a user question I have received. So what question that was, you ask? Well, let me show you. Let me quickly share my screen with you. Um, just a moment. Oh, you see the response, my response, so to say. So the question was this. The question was basically, could you show a flow that begins with all files in a folder as new files are added to these new files and the total calculation? So I assume, Yuri, what you are requesting here is that we read in all files in a specific folder. That's at least what I aimed for in my solution. So thank you for breaking down to easy to grasp material. Very welcome. So let me close this and let me just share my NIME workflow with you. So that is the workflow I have created. I have uploaded that to my public space on the NIME hub as well. Um, it follows a few advanced concepts. Some concepts we're currently touching like flow variables in my NIME crash course. If you don't know what that is, make sure to subscribe to this channel somewhere below there because a new video about the cool use of flow variables within NIME will come out soon. Plus, it also uses looping, which we have not yet touched before. But we will build this workshop, uh, this workflow from scratch right now. So let's just scroll down a little bit and let's do it again. So with the uh, one one uh, remark here, with the um, work with the workflow on the NIME Hub, you will also have all example files embedded. So the very first thing we want to do is list files. And there is a specific NIME node for that that's called list files. It's basically a combined node, a combined node of list files and folders. So we add that to the workflow and we label it list all files in data folder. Let's just quickly open this up. And we, as in the past videos as well, uh, uh, in the uh, in the NIME uh, crash course, we rarely ever go to the local file system. We go to relative to and the current workflow uh, area. And what I'm looking for is actually this folder. Here. I created a subfolder in the data folder. Should be available to you, as I said, um, with this uh, workflow if you download it from the hub as well. And I just say, okay, open. That's it. Basically, I select which mode. I don't want folders, files and folders. I only want the files that are in that specific folder. I also usually do not check these checkboxes here. So click OK, let's execute and let's see what we get. Well, what we get here is a file path. Basically, this file path is relative to um, our um, uh, workflow um, and so that we can share this workflow through the NIME hub. Um, and we will use this later on in a flow variable. So how do we read all of them at once? We would use the Excel reader, but Excel reader can only read one file at a time. Well, I would say yes and no, because we combine it with some other nodes. And the other node we're going to use is basically a loop node, chunk loop start. So double click this and add it to the workflow. And we label it like um, loop through um, every row in the file list. And what it basically does, you see here in the node monitor, we have three rows. And what the chunk loop start does, I tell it to take one row per chunk, you could do more, but in our case, only one makes sense. And hands it over to the output port one at a time. And then we do additional stuff with that. So what additional stuff do we do? Well, we turn that row that is of data type file path into a variable. And to turn a table row into a variable, there is of course a node for that. And that's a table row to variable. Very easy, very good to remember. So basically we turn the file path um, into a flow variable. And we just need to tell this node which one um, it automatically suggests that this one, I just always click enforce inclusion here in this one. And let's execute it um, once. Let's just have a quick look 
at the chunk loop start. You have seen that this looping node um, was um, looped through once. So it took the very first row from this list here and hands it over into this one. And this one here makes it a flow variable. So you can see that here in the very top row, the flow variable with the name path of data type file path. And this is something we can connect to a good old friend, the Excel reader. So let me add the Excel reader here. But wait, how can I connect it? There is no input port on a Excel reader. Well, there is no data input port to, put, to be precisely, but it has a quote unquote hidden flow variable input port. So let's right click on the Excel reader and say this nice little option here, show flow variable ports. And all of a sudden they appear. In my upcoming video, the next one in the NIME uh, crash course that I'm doing, I explain my personal opinion why I think that is usually hidden. So now we can connect these two, just like we connect nodes as always, just of course label it, read in XLS, oh, XLSX spreadsheet data. And now we basically say, hey, take basically the file from the current workflow data area, but we need a flow variable um, so a data container and look what it suggests to us here, path. And all of a sudden we can see the data from the very first XLSX file is already shown here in the preview. That's exactly what we want. Why we're here in the Excel reader, one remark. Of course, if you want to build a table with different rows, for uh, of, of the same table. Let's say you have a revenue file or a PVO file for January, one for February, one for March, one for April. Of course, the data structure, meaning the columns have to be the same. In my case, it is always a string type supplier, an integer value and a string type country. The content of each row is different as we'll see in a moment. But of course, the data structure of the table, if we want to build one big table from many files, it has to be the same. So you also now see that we have selected the flow variable that this little option above here is a little bit grayed out. And you see this little remark here that says the path parameter is controlled by a flow variable. That's fine for us. So let's just execute it. And boom, see what it did. It took the path that it got from the flow variable and read in a classical nine table. So right now the table has only one row because the source file, the source spreadsheet has only one row. And the next thing we do, we just want to loop through this path and read in the file so we can work with it later on. So what we do, we end the loop already. And therefore we have a, uh, we have a node that is called loop end. And we just take this one here, this very loop support, loop end, st very standard one. Just label it and the loop next iteration, just as a reminder. Okay. And if I execute this now, very fast, it will go through this list that we have created here at the beginning two times more. So you might be barely able to see it because it's really, really fast, but the result we will have a look at. So let's just execute this. Bam. So now we see the result here, or we see the result here. Each of the files I imported had only one line and they have now been all added together. And what we can do now is we just create maybe an Excel writer and write that concatenated file. So let's just say, write the, oops, the combined table into a new XLSX file. As always, don't forget to label your notes. You will definitely regret it if you don't do it. But of course, you should have the right. You see, that happens in a live stream. I, I not wrote, but write. 
self typo here. And now let's um, configure this quickly. Well, let's just say, what do we do? We just put it to the desktop and say to uh, combined file. Okay. And um, we just call this combined. And we also um, want to auto size and open the file after execution. So was the last note in this little workflow. So it should open up Microsoft Excel right now. And it does. And here is our file. And it consisted, let me just quickly show you this one. Oh, let me just open that. Just a moment, I will show you. Um, I can't show you, I can't show you the original files, but um, if you want to have a look at the original files that come with this workflow, you will see that this is from the first, this is from the second, and this is from the third. Also quite interesting, you see that NIME automatically recognized the column headings and didn't repeat them. It just does not just stitch them together. Instead, it recognized the column headings and of course only put the content in the new rows, which is quite interesting. Okay. So this has been working or this is working. So let me just quickly show you where you can find basically this workflow if you want to follow along um, afterwards, if you watch the recording. So just go to Nime here and here on the hub there you'll find, you see, I am already logged in. So you just go, uh, search for a user. My username is Kovisoft. So you just K-O-W-I-S-O-F-T, Kovisoft, and you will find all my results. And the one we're looking at, read many Excel files, is this one here. So that is the workflow we just built. I have previously uploaded already. And if you want to download it, it's as easy as pie. Let me just quickly show you. Um, you open up Nime. You go into the browser and maybe um, resize your window a little bit. And then you just drag and drop this one over here. I don't do it right now because I have the workflow currently open, but that's how you just open a NIME workflow um, from the NIME hub. It couldn't be any easier. So let me know, Yuri, if you're watching this, thanks a lot for that great question. Make sure um, to, to like and subscribe to the channel if you like this NIME and automation and ETL uh, uh, kind of stuff. We're coming up with a quite few uh, of uh, interesting videos. Um, and as always, um, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. And Yuri, if you liked it, maybe you want to give a, a thumbs up and uh, subscribe as well. So thanks a lot, guys. And I hope I see you then in my next um, live stream that will hopefully happen anytime soon. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Procurement Zen with Phil Kowalski. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit ProcurementZen.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, please review and subscribe. And we'll catch you next time on Procurement Zen.